Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. Now this video is basically me answering a comment I received on a recent video, which ultimately makes this video about how I believe things are gonna pan out in the future. Here's the comment I got. Hugo, how do you see things rolling out? I believe we are literally at the end of times and that humanity will be divided into two camps, those who have the mark of the beast and those that have the seal of God. Obviously, only one group will receive eternal life. I'm genuinely interested to hear how you think this is practically going to happen. So I'm going to attempt to explain how I think things could roll out today, right? Practically in the world today and how that then lines up with scripture. But it's not easy at all to explain. It's kind of complicated, but I'm going to give it a try, okay? Uh, to sum it up, right, initially, as simply as possible, using the biblical references in Revelation, as I've already stated, I believe the false prophet, the second beast of Revelation, I believe it is the media, it is the internet, it is the 24-7 connection and primary influence to the majority of the world now through smartphones and other devices. The false prophet causes, as stated in scripture, the false prophet causes many to worship the beast, to follow the beast, that being the first beast. You also have the harlot, the mystery Babylon, the whore of Babylon, who rides upon the first beast in Revelation 17, 18. The whore is eventually then destroyed, wiped out by the beast that she has been riding on. So those that are recruited by the false prophet, that would be those influenced by the internet and the media, will be led to follow the beast into rebellion against mystery Babylon, the whore of Babylon, and destroy her. Yeah, you've heard me talk about controlled opposition, how it's a pantomime, that it is a show with two extreme sides, both attempting to influence that audience into corrupting themselves, into rebelling against the commandments against God, and ultimately destroying themselves. Okay, let me let me try and explain, right? In the thumbnail, there is an image referencing the cup of iniquities spilling over. It's spilling over the sides, yeah? The cup of iniquities is a term that is not directly taken from scripture, but it's inspired by many verses. So what does iniquity mean? It means immoral behavior. It means unfair behavior. Biblically, it means to twist or to distort what is going on. So it's going against what is morally correct. In biblical terms, breaking the commandments and doing the opposite of the teachings of Jesus. So hating as opposed to loving, violence as opposed to peace, etc., etc. So iniquity is pretty much interchangeable with sin, interchangeable with evil, with transgressions, so when you hear this term, the cup of iniquities runneth over or is full, people are basically saying that the world in totality has reached a certain point where sin is now overflowing. And this usually means that something will then have to happen to rectify that. So one of the metaphorical meanings of a cup in scripture is that it is used to measure an individual's fate or a collection of people, or a nation, or the totality of the world. One explanation here is the full cup is based on the idea that God measures the actions of mankind every time we do wrong. We add a sin to our cup of grace. When all of God's grace has been displaced by willful sin, our cup becomes full of bitterness, and we have to then drink the consequences of our actions, yeah? And this can be on an individual basis or on a collective basis. And this is referenced in many places, but specifically uh, it's referenced with the whore of Babylon in Revelation. Also cups are mentioned in Revelation elsewhere. It's why you have here cups and bowls in Revelation being poured out. As it says in Revelation 14.10, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. OK, now I've talked about the media and the Internet being the false prophet, the false prophet, a.k.a. the second beast of Revelation, which is leading the masses 
onto the wide road of destruction. This is done using two extreme sides, giving you two extreme positions, like a Hegelian dialectic. The term controlled opposition is now overused, but it's basically like a war where both sides are funded and destruction is the main aim. There are no winners here. They are both losers. To the audience looking on, on one side you have the international organizations who think they are in power, who are corrupt and have always been. It's not that they are not corrupt, they are, but then on the other side you have the alternative media who are also part of that same organization, who are playing the opposite side, who are putting all of this information out, some of it is true, some of it is over the top nonsense, and are doing so in an extreme way in order to incite hatred and to stir up rebellion. Some may call it awakening. That's not what it really is. You see, this is how God works. He uses Satan's rebellion to reveal the hearts of men and women, where their heart really lies. There is no choice except destruction if you follow the beast. Yeah, many people think, including myself a couple of years ago, many think that when they look at truther channels, talking about the dark side of the elites and so forth, that they think they are finding out secrets about the elites or the occult elites plan and are arming themselves with knowledge. But this really isn't the case at all. Ultimately, looking into all this stuff leads the person to merely following a trail of breadcrumbs of which they cannot eat or do anything with. It's not going to spiritually sustain you or uplift you. You just end up dwelling on these subjects, these occult subjects, as opposed to reading the word of God. The false prophet, the internet, the media wants you to follow the beast. And the beast wants you to consume all of this over a long period of time in order to eventually get the masses to rebel against Mystery Babylon to fulfill prophecy. So this trail of breadcrumbs, it only leads to those people following it to becoming steadily corrupted over time. They are simply following the beast, which is what the second beast false prophet's job is. He's like a PR agent for the beast. And that is to get the world to worship the beast using fire from the sky in the sight of men. That's what it says in scripture. Like I said before, fire from the sky is electricity. Electricity powers your TVs, your devices, which you look at, which means in the sight of men. Hence why the media, the internet is the false prophet. What does it say? about the false prophet in Revelation. It also says, Revelation 13, 15, and he had the power to give life unto the image, the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It says, gives life to the image of the beast. That's the image on your screens, the image on your televisions, the image on your smartphones that talks to you. Yeah, should both speak. The false prophet, the second beast that uses fire from the sky, electricity in the sight of men, has power to give life unto the image of the beast. And that image speaks. That's your media. That's your internet. That's your smartphone TV screens talking to you, influencing you, right? Scripture says God created man in his own image. The beast gets you to worship and follow the image of the beast on a screen. That is the counterfeit which is attempting to change you from being godly to anti-godly or ungodly. And that's why the false prophet, internet media, its influence is all about dehumanizing people, corrupting them to become desolate of the Holy Spirit. And it causes you to worship and follow the beast. And this will build and build into what prophecy describes. And this is going to eventually, I would imagine, build into a taking down of what many see as being the establishment, a huge revolution, a possibly staged one initially, using those, the patsies, that have been following Satan's breadcrumbs online, who will over time get angrier and angrier, and therefore believing the man-made stories of the false prophet will be influenced into taking things into their own hands. Satan the Antichrist system, the beast, then using them as pawns, using those who have revealed their hearts. 
those who are not following the word of God, but allowing themselves and their faults and feelings to be molded by an online army of corrupting influence, which is the false prophet, in order to worship the beast. As I've stated uh, before in the book of Daniel, it says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Your body is the holy temple. You, your body, is the holy temple where the Holy Spirit should dwell. And the abomination of desolation is the absence of the Holy Spirit in you, meaning that you are then desolate and empty, void of the Holy Spirit, which is stated in biblical terms as an abomination. So you see it here, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, what, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit, and it will be measured for this. And if it's empty, you're desolate. The false prophet, the media, the internet, causes causes the world to follow the beast by influencing and corrupting them with delusions that encourage them to break commandments and sin. They then become desolate of the Holy Ghost in their temples, in their bodies. It is then the lawless man of sin is revealed. He is revealed in you. And then in totality, in a collective sense, the man of lawlessness or the Antichrist spirit the counterfeit version of the Holy Spirit becomes the predominant spirit of man on earth. That is what is meant by the cup of iniquity overflowing. That's the point where the temple is measured. And it will be the sin. It will be the sin of rebellion, which is what the main influence will be that will create this end times scenario. The rebellion you see being pushed everywhere now online by many, which people call truthers, exposing a new world order, talking about occult practices of the elite, which I myself have talked a lot about in the past, not so much now, I focus on the book of the Lord. And I know someone's going to be watching this and saying, but, but you, you talked about these things a lot. What are you saying? I'm not saying these things don't exist. I stand by those videos. I mean, when you see people talking about this stuff nowadays, the UN, the Lucis Trust, some of it nowadays is completely over the top exaggerated. But these organizations, yes, they are corrupt. They are involved with the occult. They are greedy, right? But as many times we are told in scripture, God removes the wicked in power, the wicked rulers, by utilizing other wicked people to do so other wicked people to do the removing. And this prophecy will play out. You see, the thing that always got me was how all of these so-called truthers and alternative media, they all seem to say the same thing, report on the same thing at the same time. It's like a military operation. It's very organized. And then they all cross promote one another. That's why they come across like controlled opposition. And if we look at prophecy, in Revelation 17, 18, we see that the beast, the beast, the first beast, will destroy Mystery Babylon. So it's clear to see that the second beast, aka the false prophet, which I say is the internet media, is motivating and promoting hatred and fear and influencing and recruiting rebels through its influence to get people to follow the first beast. Because the first beast in scripture, the first beast, has to destroy Mystery Babylon. We hear people talking about a new world order, but you can't have a new world system without removing and destroying the old one first. So you have these two opposing sides online and in the media pushing the audience to corrupt themselves. I mean, it's like I said before, it's a pantomime, it's a show, it's about the effect on the audience. It's about constantly upping the exposure of these storylines the media has and revealing information that will eventually cause an uprising, eventually motivating the vast majority of the audience to feel hatred against certain systems and then telling them they are also under attack and they need to do something to change things. So 
as I've said before, I recommend you keep away from any of it, as I would imagine as time goes on, the false prophet's propaganda online, it will become more potent and more powerful as it goes on and more effective and more people will be drawn into it. And prophecy states in Revelation that the beast, the first beast of Revelation, that is the one that is promoted by the second beast, aka the false prophet, will get the masses to follow the beast, meaning that the majority of people who follow the media and the internet will be galvanized by the false prophet to worship the beast and then destroy Babylon, which is what we see as the establishment. God will be using the corrupted to destroy the already corrupt. Do you get what I mean? And that will happen when the cup of iniquities has overflowed, meaning the amount of people in the world who are now desolate of the Holy Spirit will need to reach a tipping point and then things will kick off. And this will be centered, I believe, around rebellion. I believe people are being inspired by rebellion. As it says, 17, uh, Proverbs 17, 11, An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. God uses the wicked to destroy other wicked people in order to fulfill his purpose. He's kind of, it's kind of like he's killing two birds with one stone. It states in 1 Samuel 15, 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, the sin of rebellion, the promise of change, motivated by the fear of elite occult power organizations, is a potent way to get people to follow the beast, unbeknown to them. And the media and internet, especially the alternative media, are doing exactly that. It's an easy one to get people to follow, as many will believe they are doing something that will make a change, not realizing they are actually following uh, the beast. And I believe it will happen as prophecy states, but for anything like this to happen, many will have to be influenced to corrupt themselves by being involved, by following the man-made scripts and fables as opposed to following the book of the Lord. As Jesus said, narrow is the gate to truth, wide is the gate to destruction, and many will go through it. Let me, let me point to um, Revelation 17 and the whore of Babylon. One of the reasons you have the term cup of iniquities is from the verses in Revelation 17. Now, the whore of Babylon is described as a woman who sits upon the scarlet beast. This is the first beast from Revelation. So the whore rides on the beast. She is wearing purple and scarlet. She is drunk on the blood of the saints. Okay, She has a cup which it says all the nations have drunk from and become drunk. All the kings on earth have committed fornication with her and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Many say that the whore is uh, religious organizations and their doctrine, and this seems to be, but I believe it also could include the man-made stories that people focus on and are led by these days and international other organizations as well. They are all drunk on that doctrine as well. And this woman, the whore of Babylon, has Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth written on her forehead and she sits on seven hills. Now the seven hills is clearly a reference to Rome. If you don't know about that, look up the seven hills of Rome. So it's, po it's pointing to the Roman Catholic Church. The scarlet and purple, the colors are the colors of cardinals of the Vatican. And then in Revelation, we see that the whore of Babylon, later on in Revelation 17, is then destroyed, burnt and eaten by that beast that she was riding on. Now, the beast, in my opinion, is the international power system, the Roman Empire, the Roman army. The Roman Empire is pagan, was at the beginning, and I believe it is now. It's just that now it has evolved into all of the military forces of the world combined. They just use different names. They are all interconnected like the intelligence services. They are all interconnected. I made that video, the Roman Empire never went away, okay? It's the same, it's why they use the Roman laurels on that on their logos in the USA courts, the UN, the World Health Organization, okay? You can check that video out, it's at hugotalks.com. And the beast has now evolved into a powerful international force that has always been the Roman Empire. 
and they are going to destroy what the audience has been allowed to see as these central hubs of world power. That will be the whore, as in Revelation, that will be burnt and eaten by the first beast. It's not just the Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church, it will be all these organized religions. They all are controlled by the same people. It's no different a setup than you see in politics. It's no different to all these uh, separate political parties. You know, this also could include the likes of the United Nations themselves, the WEF, the WHO, all of these. They're just names and labels. These names and labels can be removed, destroyed, and replaced by different names and labels. They're just different sides competing for the same audience, all controlled by one. It's these organizations that have been put in center place, and they are corrupt, no doubt about that. And therefore, from a scriptural standpoint, were always designated for destruction as outlined in Revelation, in prophecy. And destruction will be caused by the rebellion that will be brought upon them by God using the wicked to destroy the wicked. Here we see Revelation 17, 16, 17. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So it states right there that those who follow the beast, recruited by the false prophet, the internet, will destroy the whore of Babylon. But they are doing the work. They're doing the work of the beast. And I believe this will be done in mass worldwide rebellion, influence and instigated by the false prophet, internet media, alternative media. And once Mystery Babylon is destroyed, then, then the beast system or antichrist system will be in place as prophecy states. And what will then happen is it will be far, far worse than before, much worse going by prophecy, as it states in Revelation 18.2. It tells you right here, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So these people that are influenced and recruited by the false prophet, the internet and the media, to rebel against the Babylon system, Prophecy is telling you we'll be doing the beast's work and putting the beast in place. The false prophet, the internet, is making the inhabitants of the earth follow the beast right now. And we need to remember that one third of the angels followed Satan in his rebellion against God. That cup of iniquities is also the same cup from which all nations have drunk from with the whore of Babylon. Revelation 18.3 For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. We are living in a world where greed and the exploitation of the poor is normal. It is corrupt. It is immoral. All of these things are true. So this is talking about the Babylon system with your false organized religions and establishment institutions that are fornicating with the kings of the earth, the international organizations, they are greedy, they are serving themselves as opposed to serving God, and they and the nations and the vast majority of people who follow these systems are drunk on the wine of wrath of that fornication. That is why that when the cup of iniquities, when it is full, then they have to drink the consequences. This is when things will kick off. And directly after Revelation 18.3, you have 18.4 through to 7, which says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So that's telling you, do not be taken in by the false prophet. Do not be taken in by the media, the alternative media, the Hegelian dialect. Keep away from the internet. If you feel you are being drawn in, I mean, its aim to, is to get you to follow the beast, to follow the wide 
road of destruction. Stop following the man-made scripts and get focused on the word of God. So then it gets it gets back to the whore of Babylon, right? For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she have filled, filled to her double. So the sins of Mystery Babylon reached up into the heavens, and you are told to come out of all of it and not be partakers of her sins, as if not you may end up being used in the destruction of it. That's what I believe it means. So yeah, that's how I see this panning out. That's how I see things rolling out. I hope it's not too uh, complicated. I hope I've made myself uh, clear. Like I've said, God is in control of all things. The Lord alone is your refuge, strength, and help in times of trouble. Jesus tells you to remain in faith at the end and to not be lured into the snares set by that false prophet in order to do the bidding of the beast. Matthew 24, 13, 14. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. So you're being told there that a time of trouble at the end will require endurance, faith, perseverance. Those who persevere are those who never lose their faith with all of the craziness that will be going on. You will be tested, tested heavily by these times, but he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope it wasn't too complicated. That is my thoughts on how things will roll out. As always, thank you for your time. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your support and your prayers. And I will see you in the next video.
shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live.